Uh, Rick is in Nebraska. As he thought his dad was dying, and then when he got there, I guess they prayed for him, and then he got better. So he's, not, so he's not dying anymore. <laughs> so uh, he's going to be back for Thursday service. Okay. So so uh, if he's ever gone again, we've got a great sub for that service. That guy back there wearing a white shirt. <laughs> I guess it went fantastic. Tell us about it. Well, it was a great deal of pressure. I was coming back from the mountains in New Mexico where I was just resting and trying to seek God and quietness and peace with my puppy. Um, you talking about your wife or your dog? No, she had to work. So oh, she had to work. I woke up uh, Wednesday morning and I knew I had to come back. I was going to stay a couple more days. I got out of the car and I jumped back. And uh, about an hour out of town, Rick calls, hey, I need you to do Thursday. I'm like, what? Mm -hmm. And um, a little fear crept in, some anxiety and confusion, and then I didn't take a hold of it right away like I should have. And it turned into extreme panic and chaos in my mind. I was overwhelmed with, I can't even describe it, it's horrific oppression and fear. And, um, Next day it got even worse and called my partner. I hear this one and say, Hey, I'm in JC's Penny's parking lot. And I go, Hey, let's do some deliverance. And she blasted me out, all the anxiety, the fear, I repented, realized who I am in Christ Jesus, and I called on the Lord. And he's faithful. He gave me every scripture. He actually gave me half the scriptures three weeks before and let me know it was a sermon. So I voice texted it to her. I didn't know for what, and then uh, he gave us the rest of it, word for word. I was saying, I'm not a preacher, Lord. I don't know what to say. I don't want to let Rick down, ABC down. I don't want to blow this thing. And I just walked back with my living room. He'd give me every word, boom, boom, and I'd just type what I'm saying. And she typed it out. And then I had peace, and then he showed up. Holy Ghost showed up and delivered. I really didn't have much to do with it. It was all him. He showed up. Yeah, I talked to Kelly about the service. She said you did a terrible job, and uh, Rick, Rick, Rick's going to be firing you. I received that. Okay. <laughs> oh wow! That I was, was getting a little concerned because after teaching last night, I'm like, that's what's happening to me. Everyone's like, hey, you're good. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> That's why God gave you a wife. They kind of buffer that stuff. Yeah. We're good at that. Oh, they're very good at it. Wow. <laughs> yeah, if he did all that for you on your first one, think about what he's going to do on the third one and the fifth one. Bang. Big. Big. Thank you, Jesus. It's going to get really big. <clears throat> I try to promote everybody I can around here to do their own ministries. Because I'm looking for long term fruit. See, he'll probably be having crusades after I'm dead. But that's what I'm looking for. I want something that lasts when I'm gone. It's not about me, I'm just helping facilitate it. That's what you want to do. Keep people going. Amen. Yeah. Uh, Stephanie could give you the same testimony. She was scared. You know, I sent her a couple of rotten people that were hard to start out with. And you learn more that way. Yeah, it was great training. If you keep getting uh, cupcakes, you don't learn how to think on your feet, persevere, fight. So I sent her one or two total losers that I couldn't do any anything with, and then she helped them. So Hallelujah. if I screw them up, I, I now send them to Stephanie. 
years ago when I was uh, a secular counselor, I felt God calling me to transition out of that work. And I thought, well, I, I, I don't know how to preach. I don't know how to teach. I don't know how to do, you know, I've never done anything like that before. And a thought popped in my head at Taco Bell. Why don't you call a bunch of rest homes? So I did. I went home and got the phone book and called like 40 rest homes. I said, uh, say, do you have anybody there that needs somebody to come in once a week and do a Bible study for your, the clients at the care home? And 80% of them said no. And uh, I got five, six, seven of them said yes. So I'd set one up a day, every day, usually during lunch, something like that. And I would go over to the rest home and cook up some kind of Bible study. <laughs> and it was a great place to start because if you make a mistake, nobody notices it. <laughs> if you make a mistake here or so at church, people know you screwed something up. They don't know that at the rest home. They think you're Moses. Okay. And you don't know anything about what you're doing. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna do that today. It was a great place to start mm -hmm. because it took the pressure off me. Because mm -hmm. there wasn't any pressure. Mm -hmm. And pretty soon I was rolling with the old folks. <laughs> I was just comfortable. One a day, five days a week. Then I went to day programs and went up from there. <clears throat> Got to start at the bottom. That's where you learn. Right? Which, which, uh, rest, home, which uh, rest home were you at where you had to dodge the, dodge the people? Oh, that was a day program up in Northeast Phoenix. It was a Catholic day program mm -hmm. on Greenway. I... Uh, was right in the middle of my Bible study, and I heard a buzzer, uh, a horn go off. Bonk. I just kept going. I just kept preaching. Half the people stood up and headed for the door behind me. Apparently, that was the first uh, bus to go home. Buzzer or whatever. That was it. And they, they all recognized it. And they all were coming at me, going by me like a mo shopping mall. <laughs> I just kept preaching. I would step by this guy. And then God said, and then I just kept going. And then I had these people left that, that went to the second bus. So I cranked them until I heard the second horn. <clears throat> then I left. Bus. Yeah, I had everything going. And it teaches you, you know, to improvise. You got to adjust, you know, Oop. somebody fell over, you know, you set them back up, keep preaching. <laughs> Anything can happen at the rest home. People would pass gas, fill their pants, fall out of chairs. No problem. I learned. Ignore that. Fix that. Go. Keep going. You got to start at the bottom. And many of you are saying amen because you're working the altars here. And uh, it's kind of like working at the bottom. <clears throat> it's tough. People come here for a thousand different reasons. Half of them are bad. Uh, some people come here with good attitude and they're easy to work with. Then you get people that have got problems. You got to learn to improvise. You got to be patient. You got to adapt. You got to maneuver. And last night at the altar, some gal drove here from Mesa. <clears throat> and as I reached out and grabbed her. She wouldn't walk up to me. So I pulled her up. I said, why did you come here? What do you need from the Lord? And then I got a, like a five-minute story, nonstop. So I just stopped and listened to everything she said. And then when she got done, it's on the tape, by the way, 
It's in the altar. I, I, you, heard every, you heard the whole conversation. I finally told her, listen, you're way off the track. Okay. When they come and see you, they're telling you about what's bothering them now. That's, that's right in their face. But that's not the root of the problem. That's just the current problem. The root of this gal's problem went clear back to when she was in grade school and her brother beat her up all the time. And he hated her, was jealous of her, verbally abused her. Uh, was that lady in white? Because mm -hmm. the chubby lady? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was her. And uh, Maria. her name was Maria? <coughs> Maria. I don't know, it kept changing. <laughs> kept changing. Well, you never know what their names are. Doesn't matter as long as they get delivered. <clears throat> and uh, when she left here, she was giggling and laughing and speaking in tongues and singing, and she couldn't believe it. Oh, but, you know, you let them talk for a while to get a little bond with them and let them know, hey, somebody on this planet, and I was the only person on the planet that would actually listen to her. When they come here, their relatives have had it with them. They don't want to hear their crap anymore. They don't have any friends left. And when they come see me and I listen to them, they're kind of initially shocked. And that's how you can help them. If they sense that you're not judging them and you're listening to them, something good might happen. You know, these sick people, they don't have anybody to listen to. Them. And no one cares about them. Particularly their relatives, because they've burned them completely out. They've torched them. Because they're always going over their problems, and nothing's ever getting any better, and they never change, and it's <clears throat> completely exhausting. So their family just can't take it anymore. And so... She made it sound like it was a really big deal to come over here because I she said she came all the way from Mesa well, There were two people standing behind her that had come from out of state <laughs> But I went along with her. I said boy, that's a long drive That's, that's a sacrifice Come from Mesa, you know, and everybody knows there's heathens everywhere in Mesa Ugh, Mesa That place needs a revival bad <laughs> I live in Mesa. Oh, you live in Mesa? I live in Mesa, off the road. Okay, this is all adding up now. I'm sorry. This is adding up now. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Thank you. Oh. Know that. That helps me. All right. <clears throat> now, you never know when you're working in the altar who you're going to help. For example, last couple weeks, testimonies. Uh, hi, my name is Hank Ortega. In 2017, Broken and Surrendered, I use your website to conduct a self-guided deliverance. Scared and with only a mustard seed of faith, I followed your instructions on the site. Upon praying accordingly, I proceeded to be delivered beyond my wildest expectations. It changed the course of my life. At that moment, I knew he was real. Praise the Lord. Amen. I had no idea that guy got anything. I don't know who that guy is. 2017, he contacted us. Okay, so you never know who you're going to help. If you plant a good seed, God waters it and causes the increase. I, I don't cause it an increase. I don't know that guy. Father did that. And then the rest of the email I didn't copy was him wanting prayer for his daughter. Now she's in trouble. Which makes perfect sense. Demons get in the family here. They go down and pick everybody off. Now the daughter's infected. Five years ago he got delivered. Makes perfect sense. Now she, she's sick. Uh, here's another guy saying, <clears throat> Brother Mike, 
I want to express my gratitude to you. I thank Jesus so much for guiding me to you and the hardcore ministry team. It brings me to my tears how much this ministry is helping me in healing and deliverance. I've been working on the miracle list and have having my deliverance calls with Stephanie. She has been so supportive, and I've been experiencing powerful deliverance with her. I'm so grateful to the Holy Spirit. Praise God for the anointing He has given you. I have learned so much by watching your teaching videos. Stephanie, join the team. Uh, last year? Not too long ago. It, Bradfield. Bradfield. Stephanie Bradfield. Huh? On Zoom too. When, when was she on? Yeah. About a year or so ago, right? So, something like that. 2021, a year and a half ago? Yeah, this girl couldn't pray her way out of a wet paper bag. She was literally useless. Had nothing. But she was motivated. And she wanted to learn. And 100% of all people like that who are humble and want to learn, Father runs over to them, takes you all the way in. She's blowing demons out of people racks at a time. She couldn't even get a prayer answered before. <clears throat> Another one. I don't know who this woman is, by the way, whoever that was. Hardcore Christianity is so special to me because it teaches you how to fight. Everyone on the team believes in freedom from bondage. I had been in deliverance for a couple of years before finding hardcore Christianity. My thought process was maybe God wants to deliver me from this or maybe not. But I've learned from HCC that if you are repenting and don't live in willful sin, you will be delivered from the bondage of Satan has put on you. When I watch Brother Mike's teaching, I usually take notes because there is deep information that I've never heard before, and I don't want to forget it. You never know who you're going to help when you share something, witness it. I don't know this, I don't know this person. <clears throat> you don't know all the people you help Thursday. You don't know. If I was a devil, I'd try to run you off too. Here's another one, last one. Hi, Brother Mike. Just a quick note to tell you how much your teachings and deliverance and ministry have changed my life. I did the miracle list twice several years ago. Changed everything about the way I live. Then I started watching Steps to Freedom. Changed up more and more. Then you sent Stephanie into my life. She delivered me for a ton of evil. Stephanie taught me to speak in tongues. I taught, taught me to deliver myself from demons. <laughs> changed the way I pray and think about other people. <laughs> I don't know who that guy is. Think about him. Fabulous. Anything can happen if you're humble and you want to learn. God will just take you all the way home. I didn't mean to interrupt, but um, <clears throat> last, last Thursday, there was a young man named Tyler. Uh, strung out on fentanyl, couldn't, couldn't get no demons out of him. His girlfriend got born again and filled with the Holy Ghost. He found the Lord. And uh, he assured me that he was going into uh, detox the next morning. Well, that was last week. He called me this morning and said, I'm getting out of detox. Now what do I do? I said, get down to the center. And, so should we have him come in here or should we, Dan and I, hit him, do a one-on-one -on -one and blast him out? He's right out of detox on fentanyl. Go get him. Okay. When we leave, that's where we'll be going. Oh, okay. Just let you know. If you need to leave early, go ahead. That's what we're looking for, what he just said. That's, that's what we're after. These are people that churches can't help. That's who, that's who we want to help. The unchurched. They go to church, but they can't get help there. Because they don't believe in any of this. Why they don't, we all know why. <laughs> the devil does not want anything to do with this. Did everybody 
get the list for last month's teaching. Uh, <clears throat> Remember I was teaching about the kind of people you're going to be running into in the ministry in the future, and Paul bullet pointed them. He told you everything about them. Did anybody not get this list? Nice to see you again. I didn't know you were Miss you. I'm back. Thank you. You got one? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Do you have any left? Yeah, one more left. Oh, you need one? We'll make some more. I <clears throat> Is it the handout from this morning? No, that was last month. Oh, no, that is. That's from this one. Oh. That was that's from last month. Yeah. That's uh, we're gonna get another copy for you. <clears throat> yeah, that list is is is, uh, is a uh, peek behind the curtain of the kind of people you're going to be working with in this kind of a ministry. And Paul listed all of them. That you need one too. Okay, I need. Oh yeah. I got it. Yeah, go. I'll go. Yeah. You know, you never, you never know who you, who you're going to help. And the more people that I've run into, I realize how much I'm helping myself, especially when I come. I've come here since we did one-on-one -on -one in 2013. Oh. But I've been watching that guy, Scott, at my house up in Scottsdale. Remember that guy, Scott, the Marine guy? You, you sent him all the special people. Well, my roommate posted him. So I started seeing that stuff in 2009. Then I hung out with David. I helped David build his, actually physically build his place. Because I heard him on the radio and I got all my friends to go. And then it's like, well, better help David. Because I'm not to both today. That lady I've known, the white, the white lady, the white dress lady, I've known her since 2004. She's an actual food business. And she was, uh, like a manufacturer's rep, and everybody couldn't couldn't handle it. But I was the only one person because I came from a pretty crazy Irish family in a crazy neighborhood. So we always took care of the people that nobody else wanted to hang out with. And uh, I can't tell you the the times that she slept in her car, she was kicked out, she was almost gone crazy, almost locked up, and I ended up being the person that she would text. I always would say, well, Pilar, Pilar to me. I said, well, go see Mike. Well, come to the So uh, <coughs> it was great to see her last night, and she looked a lot different than all those times. And you just never know. I remember when uh, Pastor Gus would say, help somebody now. I'm agricultural. Fertilize it there. Somebody will come along and put the seeds in. So just do this, and you just never know. What step of the recipe? God has a recipe. And uh, so something happened to me two Mondays ago. I went into, this, I went into uh, Fry's with my, uh, I parked my 88 Toyota, which people walk up to me with $2,000. So I want that truck. It's, somebody's crazy. Everybody's crazy for that truck. So I uh, saw an old friend, talked to him for a while. He's another kind of weirdo that I end up ministering to and someday they might show up or someday somebody else will get them to show up. And I talked to Richie for a while and I went out and I said I had a senior moment. Where's my truck? I, I've been watching where I put my truck lately. I don't want a senior moment. And I always put it in that direction and I always see it. And I thought well, maybe I'll just get distracted. And good find it. Got somebody to help me. The, 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 Card pushers, uh, security guys, and all the while, you know, they're, they're, aren't you freaked out? I went, no, something's going to happen good from this. I don't know. Either I'll park my truck better, or I don't know. We'll see what God will do. And that just came out of my mouth. And so, uh, Cole, uh, I asked people what to do. I, I was kind of 
mystified how calm I was. But I went, okay, God, well, you're just telling me that, like, here's a lesson. And let's see what happens. Other people will be affected by this, so just carry on. So um, I called the cop. The cop looked at it and <coughs> took, took the information down. And, they, and then he had a teenager to take care of. And uh, he said, well, I'll be back. It was right under the cameras. So I waited from uh, 11.30 till 5 for him to come back. But he didn't show up. So uh, um, I live around the corner. I'm at, I stay at uh, a German place. So my lady friend came and picked me up. She had already cooked me some food. So you, you know, and uh, he brought me back over over there. I got on the phone. I got on the Facebook, and I thought, well, maybe I should do for myself what I did for my friend, who has a hip replacement, but she was in a lot of pain a few weeks before. And I ended up calling 30 people to pray for her. Now, new age and like, you know, religiously wounded Catholic, we're Catholic, Catholic. And I said, well, don't worry about being Catholic. Uh, pray to Jesus for it. And out of that result, she had a fantastic thing, all those 30 people. Well, I figured, well, why don't I call those 30 people that I called? Because I, I, had, a, I had a witness that... Jackie went through that thing, amazingly. And so I put that out, I got on Facebook, I, and, and, and I, and I, I kind of just said, look, uh, this happened, ba 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 ba. I'd like to find my, if it's God's will, find this truck. Could you please pray for me and all the victims of truck theft? Could you please pray for all the people that steal trucks and steal cars and their families? Because I can't be alive. And I just put that on Facebook. And so, uh, Prayed at night and uh, got some uh, <coughs> calls from people that were praying. The people are praying here and there. So you know, here's all this, here's all this black going out from my little incident. And people are praying. So Wednesday, I got up on, and I and I never talked to a besides the cop. I never talked to anybody, any human in, in the police department. No help from prize. Mm -hmm. And I, I just didn't get just I just for some reason didn't get discouraged. I went. I'm just going to keep on seeing what what good's going to come from this. I'm, I'm the super faithful person. I got so much stuff that I'm working on. And it's like, okay, guys, <laughs> well, my truck was stolen. Let's see what happened. And so uh, my friend Rebecca was up in Glendale, and she she uh, said, "Well, what do you want to do?" I said, "You know, I just want to go around and look. I'm from a neighborhood in Philly. It could be around around the corner in the blocks. I don't know." It's not logical. And this gal was raised uh, atheist. And we've been praying for her. With, uh, my, my elder friend, uh, Kevin's been praying for her. And all of a sudden, she's starting to talk about God. She never said the word God before. So she came. We had a Chipotle. And then I said, well, I'm going to go to see Jesus Revolution with Kevin. I was kind of scared to ask him because, you know, I just don't want to push him. And she's got her phone out and she went and she got her ticket. So she was going to come with us. So we I said, well just let's ride around. We rode around back of everything, we went to a bad neighborhood, I went. And she said, Well, you said you were why don't you why don't you call the Gila police? Because it could be on the rest. It's like good idea. You know, we'll, we'll do that, but we gotta to get to this movie. So we're about to the end of baseline, the river's blocking ninety first Avenue, we're in the middle of nowhere. There's a heel of cup there. So I said, well, I might as well go up and see. He's not going to, you know, I'm going to go up and ask for help. You just never know. And, and, I, and, I, and I said, by the way, Rebecca, this is like the whole, I think this is the Holy Spirit talk. And she said, well, if it works, that'd be great. So I talked to him and I said, you don't look like a native. Yeah, I'm half black and half white. I said, where are you from? Pennsylvania. I'm from Pennsylvania. All of a sudden we had a rapport. And he said, he took out the information, and he said, you know, well, me and my buddy will go around with this and see if we can, you know, we'll, we'll keep an eye out for your white Toyota. And then I just said, well, let's go to the movie. You know, we stopped at Sprout, and phone rang five minutes later. It was that policeman, uh, Corporal Mur Murphy. He said, I just talked to my dispatch. I found your truck in uh, 
It was Toad from Indian School and uh, or Thomas and uh, 51st, all the way up to Deer, Deer Valley. So I said, "Well, here we go. Let's go get it." And they said, "Well, you can't. You have to have this and you have to have that." And I said, "Oh, I don't know what that is." And she said, "Well, is it in the glove box?" Well, my registration was in the glove box. They didn't rifle the whole darn thing. So, uh, well, can you get here this this time? I went, "Well, I guess let's just pray we get there." We got there. That lady was pulling out. The guy took care of me. I had a hundred and. Uh, 90 bucks of cash in it, it was 184 70. You know, I, I really didn't want to put it on the card. And uh, we, the, the car was full of junk, a few things were taken. But I got my truck back and I calculated less than 59 hours. <laughs> but the real phrase I feel that I, it is that all those people that, and I have a lot of friends that are. Uh, well, that's nice, that Jesus stuff is nice, and even Rebecca is like, I've been on that website, that's kind of a cult. I said, well, someday you'll be more comfortable enough to come. I said, watch it from a distance, it's okay, but, you know, watch my life from, from a distance if it scares you, and watch closer, and see what happens. And uh, so, it touched her, it touched my 84-year-old friend who doesn't, he, he He's very resistant because Christians can't get demons. But one after another, there must have been at least 30 people that, that heard the story, and I can testify to them. So you, you never know out of any kind of like trial or a struggle or a mess up what God can do with it. So I didn't even rehearse that. <laughs> yeah. And thank you. Last night was spot on. I really appreciated last night's talk. Uh, now, you lost the truck where? Where was it? Fry's parking lot. Under, Fry's under it. the cameras. Fry's where? Levine. In Levine? Yeah. And then you found it where? Uh, they, they, they dumped it at uh, around Thomas in a bed in Maryville. They dumped it off in some neighborhood full of junk that they put in it. And then they, the cops towed it. And took it off there. Now nobody, nobody let me know. I had no help from those guys. Just hope help from above. That's amazing, my friend. Wow. A lot of people got, you know, the spiritual shrapnel from the good, the good stuff that happened. Yeah, that's amazing. What a story. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay, I can't top that, but I'll try here. Now. A couple of months ago, I went over this thing. Do you remember that? That was the uh, printout of the Wexler Adult Intelligence Scale. They also have one for children. Were you here during that teaching? Is this new to how many people? Was this new to? Oh, it's new? Oh, okay. Well, anyway, <laughs> I th this was a review, but this test here is uh, the uh, scale that you are plotted on after you take the test to determine your IQ, your intelligence. So uh, this is humanity down here. <clears throat> and everybody falls in this scale somewhere, okay? so. 100 is average IQ here. And then 68% of our society falls within one standard deviation above or below the mean. So, uh, 85 here and below would be considered borderline intellectual functioning here. This would be profoundly impaired, like mental retardation would be here. And then over here you'd have Albert Einstein and so on. 
Remember that? And you can see the percentages drop as you get further from the mean or the center of the society. So generally speaking, somewhere in this range, the gospel works the best. If you share the gospel at this end here, uh, they have trouble grasping the basics. If you share the gospel up in this area, people that are really intelligent overprocess spiritual things. They think too much about it and it doesn't tend to get into their heart. So you're going to be running into people in this spectrum here in your ministry, and that's going to cause additional problems trying to help them. So these, you've got to kind of do what I do, talk slowly and repeat yourself like I do in the teachings. You know, really intelligent people don't really like to hear me teach because they've already got it, so move on. But I, I don't. I kind of spin around a while trying to get to this area and get something in without rushing through it. Uh, every from the 70s to now, to the 2000s, these IQ testing scores go up every decade, one or two or three points. Until now, for the first time in <coughs> decades, the IQ scores on a national level have dropped a couple points. You mean since after 2000, it starts going? Is that what you mean? After uh, the 70s. Well, it's, it's always gone up right. every decade but recently, until now. Recently. Until now. Okay. Like, uh, Northwestern and University of Oregon just came out with a report two days ago. That's why I brought this back up again. I was going to add that to it. <clears throat> For the first time in decades, IQs have started to go down. Are you saying since 2020? No. Two days ago. Okay. The report came out two days ago. From the 70s till they've always gone up. Every single decade, IQ's scores have always gone up, but now they're starting down. Isn't that kind of good, though, on the spectrum of the, the more intelligent side, that their hearts might be opened up more as their intelligence is going down? Because you were saying that they're over-processing and they're not able to, to fully accept it. I've already got this. So, could that allow for the hearts to be opened more? It might. Yeah, generally speaking, if it's down in this area, you'll have your best fruit. You know, up here you have Bible scholars. When it comes to ministering in the Spirit, they're, they're literally worthless. They have no idea what's going on. Yeah. Just for clarification, you're not you're not saying that people that have IQ now their IQs are going down. You're saying that the average is being pulled down because the younger people are no longer as bright as they were. Well, no, that's a good question. See, they <clears throat> they don't know why IQs are going down. 
I have a theory on it, but I can't prove it. Uh, to me, it's a combination of our rotten society. Uh, the air we breathe, the food we eat, the chemicals, the social media. All, uh, it's, it's almost like an avalanche of destruction. Uh, I just read another survey on testosterone. Did you see that one? came out two months ago. Yeah, the testosterone levels in males are going like this now. I just read another survey, which I wasn't going to share, but since I'm sharing stuff that's useless, uh, <laughs> according to this research, the more sugar you eat, the less desire the body craves for healthy food. They ran uh, control group, sugar groups, regular food groups, vegetables, fruits, and the more a person eats sugary foods, the less the body itself repels regular food. Salad, ugh. Yeah. So my theory is, and I can't prove this, only theory, that we are so loaded with crap and chemicals, and there's nothing we can do about it. We breathe this stinking air, we eat this ratty food, all these chemicals and crap in the food is, in my mind, damaging brains. And, and people's intelligence is starting to feel the effect of it. I can't prove that, but I think that's what's happening. Um, can somebody escort her out? <laughs> yeah, way over here. What was that? Like, started what? The study, the study where the when did it start? Get, yeah, when, I know it came out two days ago, but oh, it was in the last year. They they oh, they studied four thousand okay, IQ okay. scores. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> they do annual studies, and this is the first year they're going down. Mm -hmm. Would that be similar to people? We're seeing more and more people are getting autism. And all of that. Getting what? Pardon? Getting what? Autism. Autism. No. No, this was... Um, <clears throat> I'm not saying that this is a, a scale for human intelligence. Human intelligence, yeah. But what we're eating and the vaccines and other... Oh, okay, yeah. We, could be. I wonder if that's what's happened to people. Yeah, could, sure could be. Autism. Yeah, I don't know. I can't prove any of that. That's not my area of expertise. Yeah. But, but autism and Alzheimer's and dementia, yeah. boom, all jumping. Yeah. And uh, no question demons have a part in it. But it could be all this other crap they feed us and everything we drink and eat and everything. It could be, you know, subtly poisoning everybody. Again, I can't prove that. I just share an opinion. And... Uh, Thank you for yours. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to get us banned. Chase. <clears throat> I wish everybody at the. I not send you an email, Mike. I don't. <laughs> I wish all the, the uh, men at our deliverance center could control their wives. I didn't mean to say that. I didn't mean to call them. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right, so. Um, Bible scholars and really intelligent people uh, don't do well in this kind of ministry because this is a ministry of the Spirit. We're trying to get the Holy Ghost to move. And he focuses on two things you need to remember. Childlike faith and love. That's what motivates him. And uh, Albert Einstein and Elon Musk out here, they're beyond this here. They're in the 0.1% over there. They're, they're too analytical for God. You know, uh, Jordan Peterson, you ever heard of him? He's a famous psychologist. He's got a huge IQ. And he's a big Jesus fan, you know. But he couldn't pray his way out of a wet paper bag here. He's got nothing. But he knows ten times more than I do. 
See, God moves here. <coughs> Not here. That's right. See that? Now, if you get somebody like John Lake up here, who also has that, the devil's got a real problem on his hands. Big problems. You get somebody with childlike faith and love and a high IQ, the devil's in for a beating he's not going to forget. Like John Lake. Super smart, but a lover. Extremely dangerous man to the devil. And again, the problem with the higher IQ people is they can use their mind to shut their emotions down. And uh, they, can, they can shut down their soul, you know, and they haven't cried since they were seven, you know. Uh, they can tough stuff out mentally that other people can't. And they kind of get immune to getting beaten or rattled. There's all kinds of things you can do with your mind that regular people can't do, right? Including reading a mind. A regular person here cannot read minds. You got to be way up there and have demons to be able to read somebody's mind. People down here are not reading your mind. <laughs> They're not reading nothing. They can't even read, period. Say what she said. What when you say they cannot read? What do you who say? can't read? When you said oh, you're like read, down here, they, a lot of these people can't even read. Period. Like they're mental, re, mentally retarded. They've got developmental disability. This section. These are very low IQ patients. And then these are very high IQ patients over here. See, but spiritually, I found it's better to be in kind of in this range to get the best fruit out of people because they're able to grasp everything plus they've got they understand that this is spiritual and they got to repent yeah so what can you do to reach the highly intelligent well you'd have to have somebody intelligent witnessing to them number one <laughs> you know having somebody here try to explain to a guy with Probably not going to ride well, but you never know. The anointing could kick in, and the Holy Ghost IQ isn't on any chart. It's right. <laughs> say the least. Maybe he doesn't fit into a chart. Thank God. Yeah. So that's kind of how that works. You can kind of see it. I touched on it last night. The IQs are kind of dropping. The demons are going up. It's kind of an inverted movement. And you see a system where they're now chronic gaslighting. It's everywhere. Everybody is lying. And if you don't like it, they tell you you're nuts. <laughs> I mean, it's like nothing we've ever seen. And it's going to get worse. And just everybody is lying. It's amazing. Fulfilling revelation. The people that get into the New Jerusalem are these people. And the ones out, those who lie and love lies. That's what it says. And that's where we're headed, to a society of chronic, pathological liars. And when artificial intelligence takes over, 
when the deep fakes start running everything, everything is going to be a lie, including what you're visually seeing. Yeah. It's only a matter of time till the deep fakes take over. I mean, they're almost there now. It's almost, I mean, it looks like that person. It sounds like them. You can't tell the difference. And they're going to control everybody and everything. IBM started it, right? IBM started this whole thing years ago with the chess. They built a computer that they wanted to be able to beat a grandmaster. And initially it was losing. And then it, then it beat Spassky. And now it's unbeatable. A human can't beat it in chess, period. You make a move and the computer clicks in 2.7 million options. Click like that. You have no chance of winning. It's coming and they're, they're coming for us. It's going to happen. And if you're not spiritually ready, you're going to be in big trouble. Well, on that happy note, uh, let's go over. <laughs> now, that handout I gave you, am I ready to do that? Yeah, here we go. Now, uh, as you know, this is our old standby. I taught the addicts at the Dream Center this. They loved it. This is my old chart here. Yeah. This is your soul. That's where your emotions come out of. That's your spirit, man. That's where your spirituality comes out of. Here's your free will and your intelligence and your mind. Yeah. And here's your body. And all these things. Here's your conscience. That's the home of your morality. These things are your inner man, Paul said. And they all affect your body. These things are all express, expressed through your body. Everything in your life comes into your body through your five senses. So you've got five parts and you've got five senses. Right? Okay. That handout is an expression of the damage in your soul. So... When you're wounded as a child, beaten, raped, so on, this damage, these scars on your soul, if they're severe enough, manifest in your body. How do you know if you have a soul wound? All you have to do is use your discernment thermometer. There it is. The artwork's there. And if you're having an emotion that's coming from here, okay, and if it's a negative emotion that you can't control, it's probably coming from a wound on your soul. And so at the altar in here, you can listen to the person and they'll They'll express themselves, like that lady in Mesa. The way she was talking, the look on her face, you know, panic. She was bitter toward that uh, psychic lady that tormented her. <laughs> Who was working with her other than me? Anybody? You? Yeah. She was talking about that psycho lady that, was, that damaged her. Uh, somebody stole a bunch of money. All these bad things were happening to her. Uh, she was living out of her car for a while. Can you explain bitterness, please? Bitterness, yeah. Uh, resentment towards somebody who screwed you over. Somebody stabbed you in the back. And your soul takes in a wound. And then you got that little bit of resentment there that won't go away. 30 years later, you still got kind of a yucky feeling about that person. Jesus called it kind of ought. 
So she started to express some of that while she, while she was talking. And I had to literally interrupt her four times. Or she would not have stopped talking. And so there's the anxiety coming out of the soul. When the person talks all the time, that's telling you, hey, this person is hurt here. That's not here. It's there. Fear, anxiety, talking like a magpie, running their mouth like a busted chainsaw. Fears, wounds, they won't shut up. Because their fear is you're not listening. The fear is you're not going to understand what's happening to them. Their fear is, oh my God, you, you haven't experienced this before. You, don't, you can't put it in a frame of reference. It's all anxiety, fear-based wounds that this lady had last night, right? <clears throat> so I would interrupt her. I said, you're off the track. And to my amazement, she, she was listening. I'm, I'm off the track? Yeah. Oh, okay. And she let me talk for a minute. Then she started again. Then I'd sit and listen for a little bit. Then I, uh, now, you see, you got off the rails again. You, you're in the ditch. I'm in the ditch. <laughs> yep. And she'd stop, and then I could get a little, some more truth in. <laughs> and Renju tried it and didn't work. <laughs> she seemed, for whatever this is worth, she seemed receptive. Like she started taking her notes. She started taking yeah. notes. So it's like. Yeah, she was receptive. She was singing she, and. She's apparently going to Julie's. Like she's off. She's set up. She's ready to. Come. Yeah, she bought into it. She was uh, singing and happy and singing in tongues. She couldn't, move. we didn't get any demons out of her, but at least we got that in. Right. Yeah. And I do that every time. If you can't get demons out of somebody, get something in. And then they'll you plant a seed, and then they'll come back and get the rest of it done. I at least try to get something for them. Sometimes I'll, I'll take a shot at a healing if I'm not getting anywhere. And if I can get, it, get them healed, boom, now I got something in them. Now they'll come back and finish. So you got to be versatile. Improvise. You know. If the demons give you lemons, <laughs> You make orange juice. Now, here's what we do. So you go to your thermometer, discernment thermometer, and if this person has got anger problems, boom, you know that's coming from and it's being ramped up by that. So a spirit gets in their brain and they can rehearse something that happened to them negatively 40 years ago and recount details of it. That's supernatural. The spirits are constantly replaying that asinine incident 40 years ago and it's as fresh now as it was then because they keep it up to date. <laughs> Hence, a lot of the divorces. I've been married a few times, I'm ashamed to say, but one of my wives never forgot anything I did that was bad. Never forgot it. Stuff I would forget, she remembered. I don't mean remembered. I mean dates, times. <laughs> I didn't know that back then that this was happening. The spirits were running me through her mind. Hey, Brother Mike, he sucks. Here's why he sucks. A detailed printout would come out in her brain. Why I suck. And it wouldn't go away. If you 
apologized for it or confessed it. It doesn't matter. The demons don't care whether you do that. They, they're just, they want to destroy you. And so it just clicked. Click, 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 click. click. And then this triggers. The, the, the anger and the bitterness manifests. So that lady, what was her name? Maria? Maria. Maria. It was her brother that was beating her up when she was young. So I had to spend time on her forgiving him and praying for him. You can't let anybody get away with that. Let's say the person is 0% at fault and the other one is 100%. Doesn't matter. This thing here is never going to go away if they don't repent. They'll always be ill. So some people's daughters get mad at somebody in the family and they never hear from them anymore. And they're gone. F you. I'm out of here. I don't have to put up with your crap anymore. That's, a, that's this. And that'll stay with them till 70 years old. If God doesn't intervene, they'll never see their daughter again. But if somebody's praying, then he's going to intervene. Mm -hmm. There it is again. I get I, more. You hear it? That's an angel. Um, he likes my teaching today. I like to show the angel this chart. It gives them some knowledge. Now, what it is is, here, here is your Holy Ghost department here. And uh, if you have a real high IQ, we need love and childlike faith coming out of here, huge, to circumvent this over-analytical processing system. Why was this person healed and that one wasn't? What did they say? What did they do? How, what's the difference? How do you differentiate that? Hey, dude, get on your knees and cry there. You'll get all the healing you need. <laughs> Go here. Why did Jesus spit in this guy's face? Why did he make a puddle and spit? The slapping anointing. I get a shake in my hand when it comes upon me. I slap them in the head. What am I doing there? Trying to lower their IQ so they can receive <laughs> some repentance. See? That's how you do it. Yeah, I'm a, I have a full range of skills. Few people have it. These things here manifest over here. So if the person's healed, it doesn't, it, it doesn't happen anymore. See? Remember, remember you had that flash anger you had before God healed you? Well, that's gone now. So when somebody does something stupid or stabs you in the back, you don't... What? How dare you? That's outrageous. No, it isn't. It's, it's the devil trying to get you to... Take an offense so we can wipe out your ministry. That's the fastest way to do it, is take an offense. Yeah. They threw Paul in jail. He didn't take an offense at all. He just wrote the New Testament. Now, take that. <laughs> but if he took an offense, he wouldn't have been able to write the New Testament. He'd been in a frame of mind where he couldn't have received the download. So, you cannot take offenses and be in this type of ministry. You can in others, but I mean, not this one. That's going to be an open door for spirit to transfer to you. Taking offenses. I was thinking about Peter Wellman's truck. 
when he lost his truck, he didn't start calling me and saying, oh man, I lost my truck, I'm grumbling and complaining. He said, no, I'm going to learn something through this. God's going to do something. And he got his miracle. Boom. Had he done that, he never got a truck back. Nothing. Yeah, he'd be walking. Yeah. Perfect testimony. People didn't get it. They said, Why are you? What are you saying? What? Well, you off the truck, and God's going to work. And they, what? Would you? Be, they couldn't believe that I wasn't freaking out. Yeah, because everybody freaks out. And <clears throat> that's how the devil gets them going. And even the. Christian people were saying, well, it's already in Mexico. It's already taken apart. Christians are no different than sinners. <laughs> we're not interested in Christians. We're looking for just some disciples around here. Yeah. Christians are a dime a dozen. They are useless. I went over it last night. I put down the blueprint. Here's what you got to have to be in the ministry. 27 things Paul said you needed. But Christians don't care. They just feel God calling them, and they go in the ministry. That's not what you're supposed to be doing. <laughs> you got to prepare to go into the ministry, just like you got to prepare for anything else. I mean, you, God, you don't wake up Tuesday and you're a journeyman plumber. What are you stupid? <laughs> you got to put in like 15 years. Or so. Come on, stop it. Well, the ministry is the same thing. You got to. Go through the school of some hard knocks. You got to be able to take some shots. You got to have some resiliency, some patience. You got to be able to fight. You got to be able to fight when you're down. Being down is a common thing if you're in the ministry. If, you, if the ministry is worth a hoot, you're going to be down once in a while. Getting up is the key. It's the Elijah syndrome, you know. What are you doing sitting on this tree? <laughs> I'm all alone. <laughs> what a great story, because everybody feels that way. I'm all alone. I could relate to the guy. Everybody can. But it's a trick. You're never alone. You got the Holy Ghost living right there. You can't be alone. It's not possible. No. No. You're not able to be alone. So somebody comes into my office, they want counseling, and they're, they're not the talkative type. So I got to drag stuff out of them. You're going to have to do that at the altar and in your ministry. You're, you're, sometimes you're going to have to drag stuff out of people. But you can't do it nastily, you know. Will you answer the question? <laughs> Do you want the... Okay, that method will cause a shutdown. Here, they'll just shut. So they say something to me vague all the time. I've just been attacked. How have you been attacked? Well, I, I just, I woke up at 2 in the morning and this, I don't know, I've just, I was attacked. Okay, so after I ask the same question six times, I get an answer on the sixth one. It happened Thursday. They finally answered the question. So the devil will try and get them to give you vague answers. I'm hurting. Okay, that's not an answer. I'm being attacked. No. What? Is happening to you. Well, I'm not feeling well. No, that's not an answer. Okay, nobody feels well. Yeah. Do you know anybody that feels well all the time? I don't know, things up. Unless they're in a casket. <laughs> if you're alive, you're not feeling well all the time. Are you? <laughs> So you got to make them answer specific questions. <laughs> and Thursday it happened to me. <clears throat> I, no, it wasn't Thursday. It was last week, a couple weeks ago. I don't remember. 
what are the demons talking to you? She heard a voice. I said, what did they say? Seven times. I had to ask her. Do you remember that? Seven times. So she would tell me what they said. To get information about what they're saying gives you deep insight into where they're going. See? The demons, unlike Christians, they think about stuff and plan stuff. So I finally got her to say, you know, go kill David. That's what they told her. She heard it in her head. And then she started to get sad over it. Okay? So right there you know okay, that her sadness is coming out of a wound here. Right? Listening to demons is cause, being caused by her not renewing her mind. Right? Jesus listened to demons. They would talk to him and he would tell them to fumao is the Greek word. Shut up. Okay? You don't tell somebody to shut up if you didn't hear what they said. Correct? <laughs> so now I know the demons are doing something with David to her. And David has something to do with this wound in here. Because it bothers her. I also know the woman has not renewed her mind because you're not supposed to be sitting around like a witch listening to demons. That's not your job as a born-again Christian. You listen to your Heavenly Father, not demons. I went to, through a whole schmear last night about demons saying good things to people, positive things, truthful things, and quoting scripture to them. You are not supposed to listen to them, say anything at all. It's not what they're saying, it's the source. Jesus went to the source. When the Pharisees said something to him, he answered them. When the demons talked to him, shut up. When his heavenly father talked to him, he listened to every word. You have to screen out who you're listening to. Who do you listen to? <clears throat> and who you listen to is determined here. Jesus didn't have any soul wounds, had the Holy Ghost without measure, and had a 100% totally renewed mind. Okay? Now you and I will never have that. It's never going to happen. Let's be real about it. It doesn't matter though. You can make dramatic improvements in these areas using the Spirit of God, even though you'll never reach that level. Christ, the ultimate. There's nothing, I'm never going to be at that level. It's not going to happen, no matter what I do. But you don't have to be at the perfect level, okay? You could make have an incredible ministry with massive fruit. Yeah. Question. So if you're hearing something that sounds like it could be the Holy Spirit speaking to you because it sounds biblical, it sounds right, how do you know if it's demons or the Holy Spirit? Well, that in that kind of a counseling case, you have to look at the person's background. Because it could be kundalini spirits impersonating the Holy Ghost. So what does right. kundalini spirit does? What was that? Last night you were talking about the kundalini. Yeah, spirit. they're they're Holy Spirit fakers. Yeah. They're fakers. They're fakers. What's the evidence of that spirit? Yeah, how do you know? How can you? Well, you look at the person's background, and what will happen is. The kundalini demon will say this, that, and this, and that. This one doesn't come true. That one falls apart. They told him to go here. That didn't work out. You see this pattern of failure. Okay. God told me to go to Ethiopia. God told me to go talk to this person. God gave me a word. That, what happened then? God sent me an angel. Oh, what did he look like? I don't remember. 
Kundalini. Okay. Who in God's name is going to forget what an angel looks like? <laughs> what are you talking about? Stupid. <laughs> Obviously a familiar spirit. Yeah. I've asked over 100 people who have seen angels when they come to see me. A small percent was legit. A very small percent. I don't know, 2%. But Demons love angels. They'll fool the whole church with angels. Fool everybody. One lady came to me. <laughs> I told you that story last night about my kundalini learning process. If you were here last night. Anyway, I don't want to go through that whole story again. But one lady that came over from that ministry was loaded with spirits. Had all kinds of soul wounds here. Emotional problems you wouldn't believe. Poor... Uh, Poor, uh, had not renewed her mind. She was in a worship service at one of their seminars and looked up and saw, I don't know, a, a, a circle of angels at the top of the auditorium going around in a circle. I said, what were they doing? She said they were doing the polka. <laughs> I said, can you excuse me for a minute? Went in the back room, ran a line of crack, no. came back out. Are you kidding me? You think God's going to send a circle of angels doing the polka? <laughs> Well, I know it seemed real. Bingo. I just defined it for you, sir. It seemed real. This woman was in the prayer room for over an hour, violently retching up spirits. Yeah. What is polka? What's a polka? Yeah. No. Nobody in Mesa knows what that is. <laughs> you don't need to know. So when you get that or the other one was the other lady came over I saw an angel stand in my yard you did boy he was 40 foot tall he was taller than the light post he was what was he wearing I don't remember bingo you don't remember really you saw a 40 foot angel in your yard is that correct yeah, he was out there. Taller than a light pole. Yeah. You don't recall what he was wearing. Was he naked? No. Well, what did he have on? Skinny jeans? <laughs> what? It, it's all a fraud. It's all a fraud. It's a distraction. It's, it's the demons trying to tell you, hey, you're very spiritual. Because these people don't see angels, but you do see them. So you're in a special group of angelic visitors. Ooh. See? There's a 40-foot angel. And Rod Steiger turns around and says, It's all fake. And that went all summer long, 2005. All summer long. Yep, another guy driving down, uh, what's that highway going to Maricopa? Hey, I just lost it. Uh, you turn off the 10. What's that? 347. 347 to Maricopa. They're driving down the 347 to Maricopa. This, this guy, and a minister, high up in this other ministry. His friend is with him. An angel appears in this uh, pasture, farm, farmland, flashes, bright a light, Klieg light type thing, and runs across the freeway to the other pasture. <clears throat> Thank <laughs> you.
<clears throat> thought it was all real. <clears throat> and this guy was, this guy was, he's still ministering over there. He was, he was down in this area here. This guy was smart. Had a nice anointing, great personality. Good looking guy. Probably second or third from the top in this ministry. He came in, he was on the bench for 45 minutes. Just monsters coming out of him. He's one of their top teachers. He still is. Still over there. Great guy. You know, you know him if I mention his name. So this the Kundalini, they're, they're Holy Ghost fakers. See? And they deal with body sensations. They love to give you jiggies, jumpies, feels goods, temperature changes, vibrations, oh, movements like that to jerk the body. Oh, I got the anointing. Oh, I got it. There it is. See that? Hey, I can feel it coming on me. Yeah. Would that also be, for example, like for the Mormons when they mention about that? You know how they improve the spirit of the thing in our stomach? Burning of the booze. Burning of the booze, yeah. Yeah. That's a familiar spirit. Wow. Yeah, they're faker. They're brilliant. Brilliant spirits. Jesus warned us. He said, even the elect will be deceived. Yeah. And these people I was working with, they were good people and good ministers. They, were, they loved God. This wasn't a satanic cult. This was a real ministry. I noticed with the people with Kundalini really bad, they'll get great deliverance. Like they'll get it for a minute and then they leave and the demons just start. Come right back. They just go right back to the church or wherever. And yep. Yep. I have to get them to renounce all of the behavior of that spirit. The 40-foot angel out there, the flash of light angel. I renounce that. I reject that. That was fake. Mm -hmm. that, and if they have any kind of affection or fondness for it, or they miss it, mm -hmm. whew, man, big trouble. I had one lady that had gold dust come out of her hair. I was praying, and God gave me the anointing. I said, well, we need to get a new building. Can you collect some of that for us and bring it? How do you spell Kundalini? K-U-N-D-A-L-I-N-I. Kundalini. 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 Kundalini
all that crap leaves the body. <coughs> so all you have to do is check the symptoms to know if somebody has soul wounds or spirits. And you've got them. It's not rocket science. <coughs> If you're working with somebody and they have these symptoms, that there's a root to those symptoms. And the symptoms are on that sheet I gave you. I want you to take a look at this sheet so that you can match it up with the people you're ministering with. But uh, to short circuit it, almost all these problems are caused by one of two spirits. They usually work together. If you find one, you'll find the other one there, usually 99% of the time. That's rejection and fear. I put that at the top there. <clears throat> uh, I've had a rack of asthmas healed over the years. That I have always found is a spirit hiding in the lungs. <coughs> As soon as I bang that thing out of there, they're breathing normal right in front of you. But, uh, how'd they get in there? Well, there's the definition. Those are the kind of things you look for. Just match up the symptoms with the illness. That's all you got to do. Allergies, Mike? Same? Here? Allergies? Allergies trigger it. Mm -hmm. Is this a compiled information from reading other people too. And well, most of it comes from that being health book we sell in the lobby and from my experience. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Arthritis. Almost every arthritis case has those those soulish symptoms. Feeling unloved, rejected, Fear of never being loved. Same demons. Joints start cracking. <clears throat> so I wanted you to use this uh, as a little quick reference guide in your ministry. So when somebody comes in and they've got this problem, bang. It's not the problem. It's what's under the problem. So when someone comes to you and says, I'm afraid, okay, that's, that's not the problem. And so you ask them a question, what are you afraid of? I don't know, I'm just fearful. And then you got to repeat the question. And then, then sometimes you got to repeat it seven times. So you got to have patience to just keep putting it in their lap. They shove it off, I pick it back up, I put it back in their lap. Then they finally tell me, oh, I was thinking about my daughter. Oh, now we're on to something. What were you thinking about your daughter? Well, her husband does this and that and that. And that. Oh, now we've got the son-in-law here. Now, now we've, within seconds, I've now moved to some useful information to get this fear demon out of there. It's related to those two units. You know, it doesn't take much to explore in somebody's soul, put her around in there. But if they're blocking or hiding, you got to just keep asking them the same question over. I didn't ask you that. I asked you what he said. What did the demon say? Seven times I had to ask her that. She wouldn't tell me. But I couldn't let her out of the office. I had to keep pushing my way in in order to help her. Because if you let somebody leave with their delusions, they're, they're not ever going to get healed. You will know the truth. And the truth shall set you free. Not delusions. Everybody has delusions. That's not going to help me. So you've got to get them to face it. And then she came up, like Kelly said, 
with that story about him and you know, her mom intervened. He stabbed her. She saw it. So now, now I'm into a bag of trauma here. Now you can see how easily the spirits entered her. Right? Pretty easy to see. <clears throat> and this little, little guide here should be good for you. You know, at least give you a lead. And then sometimes the Holy Ghost will move you in another area. That's great. Learn, learn to make your move. That you don't follow this like <clears throat> rubber stamp. No, this is just kind of a guide. Just get a feel for what's going on underneath the complaint. Because the complaints are very rarely the problem. My back hurts. That's not the problem. There's, there's a story behind that back. I got headaches. Well, wait a minute here. Headaches. Oh, here they are. No, there's something else going on. Not just headaches. There's, there's a reason somebody's having chronic headaches. Here it is. Headaches on the sheet. Hmm. Brother Mike gave me this. Let me take a look at that. Hmm. Let me explore that with this person a little bit. Have you ever been hard on yourself when you were young? Yeah, I was hard. Was your mother or dad hard on you? Yeah, my mom criticized me all the time. Oh, then you started criticizing yourself? Hmm. Really? Did that bother you? Yeah, it hurt. I want, my mother was always running me down. Oh, okay. Did that cause, cause you a lot of fear or stress when you were young? Did it? Yeah, I wanted my mother. Was your mother uh, kind of a huggy, feely type, or was she kind of more reserved? Oh, she was kind of reserved. She, oh, now, see, I'm learning all that stuff within 120 seconds. I just dug that out of this imaginary person right in front of you, right? And here it is. Stress, fear, self-criticism, pressure. Did your mother boss you around a lot when you were a kid or your dad? Yeah, she was. Uh, yeah, did you get bullied in school a lot? Oh, okay. Now you've got chronic headaches. I sure do. Right? There's a cause and effect for everything, right? There is. And so in the spirit world, the same thing. Something is causing the other thing. <clears throat> most of the time. Not all the time. I'm just saying most of the time. So if you go for the probability, you're probably going to be okay. Skip the possibility and go for the, what's probable. Okay? And you'll, you'll hit it. God will help you. He'll wind you through it because he knows everything. He knows how to get you there. But if you're patient and you're lovingly persistent, you can win. I've seen hundreds of people healed right in front of me. But I just was patient. I let them talk for a while. But they needed somebody to listen to them. Then I had to ask him some questions over and over again, so I'm used to doing that. Yeah. When you've had a bunch of wives, uh, you, there's so much you learn. And so you just keep inching your way in because your, your goal is, I, I need to help this person. <laughs> That's your goal, not to get paid or get somebody to pat you on the back. That stuff all happens at the judgment seat of Christ. Okay? Jesus takes care of all that stuff. Right here, your job is to help somebody and get them an inch closer. If I can just get them another inch, <laughs> just a little closer, he'll, he'll hit them. And that's what you're trying to do, just get them a little closer. And Father will He'll move. He'll move. He's great at it. Really great. All right, any last questions before we conclude? Anybody? No. I have a question, Mike. In regards earlier when you said about getting to the fear of the woman or the man you were talking about that finally you dig out with your daughter, 
I mentioned the daughter, you said it was the, uh, the son-in-law. So for example, let's say the son-in-law and he's doing something to harm the daughter, right? And that's getting the father scared. Then how would you pay all that? Well, the, pro the, the demons are doing that to get to the father. Okay. Because they see an opening there. Right. So the question is, why is there an opening there? Is it uh, guilt? Uh, is so it shame? For example, the son-in-law is causing something bad to the daughter. Right? Yeah. And out of love to his daughter, to the daughter, that's causing him the fear of the son-in-law doing something to harm the daughter. Yeah, now, see, we don't know that. You'd have to explore that. Is it actually... Fear of her safety, or is it fear that he didn't warn her not to marry him? Is it guilt the way he raised her? Something else could be going on. Mm -hmm. So I would start auditing the dad to see what's triggering that fear. But if it was safety, for example. Is what? If it was safety. Safety. Yeah. That would be a legitimate fear. Right. So if somebody's living in a dangerous situation, but what would we yeah, do? that would be normal. That wouldn't even be an illness. Right. No. But if it's something else, then that guy's got to get healed. And the demons are using the son-in-law to get to the dad. Mm -hmm. If the situation is very dangerous, I try to get the daughter out of there, mm -hmm. if possible. So you've got to explore these emotions and find out if they're legitimate or they're paranoia. The dad could feel guilty that uh, he didn't say to her, hey, you know, I met your future husband. I, I think the guy sucks. Get away from me. Or I heard something and, that, and he didn't say anything. So it could be guilt backing back up now, manifesting in fear. So your, your job is to figure that out so you can get the dad healed so he can pray correctly. Because if he loves her, he'll pray for her. You just follow the emotions like a bloodhound. Hunt them down, sniff them out. And you'll, you'll probably find what's wrong with the person. And you know the story, it usually relates to a family member, somebody they loved, somebody close to them. Very rarely does the devil use, you know, somebody you hardly know. You know, that's not gonna, Putin, you know, you, there's not a lot of pain in your soul over Putin. But if you were related to Putin, now that might be a different story. So you probably wouldn't be alive. You know, probably, he would have probably had you, you know, exterminated. But usually the devil uses somebody close to you, like your daughter. And then your daughter turns on you and disappears, and you can't talk to her anymore. So the devil tells the mother, to live in sadness and confusion and fear and worry about her. How is she? When is she going back? What's going to happen? And that was all done to destroy the mother. Yes. And then the mother buys into it, and so she just then destroys herself, which is what some mothers do, isn't it? Yes, do. <coughs> uh, I have to fight. Uh, yeah. And then sometimes you try to get them to see that, and they don't see it. Isn't that right? If you don't know how the devil works, you're not going to see him plotting out for you. If you're not going to catch it. Yeah, you're going to marry him. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's funny. He's packing. Okay, funny and packing. There's no reason to marry somebody. Hello? Hello. Did I lose everybody? <laughs> okay, I'll talk to my YouTube guys. Listen, uh, dudes, do not marry that person because you love them or they're packing or they got money. That's no reason to marry somebody. Thank you. Stop. If you need prayer, you can hang around here. We got some people here and pray for you. They got the anointing. They'll do it. Uh, <clears throat> the last uh, three years, I've really added some great people on the staff that have been fantastic, particularly the counselors. It's been going great. Uh, it's been wonderful. 
Yeah. Bill. Can I say sure. I'm Dad. Some of you. I was here about two weeks ago. Oh. Okay. Um, God just intervened in my life like you wouldn't believe. What happened? Um. Well, without going into great detail, um, was going through some things, and um, my wife wanted a divorce because of me. Um, got to the end of my rope one morning and just was ready to blow my brains out. Hollered out to God, help me. Send me someone. Help me. I got the number to the center. I called. Mike called me back about, was it an hour? 30 minutes? Yeah, I don't recollect. Okay. Well, he called me back and he told me, he said, um, we've had a cancellation. You're very special. God loves you. Can you be here at 1 o'clock? So I showed up. Um, Mike also called me one night. These things were coming out like <laughs> I never experienced this before. My wife got home from Florida. She's in counseling right now. Um, and then earlier this week, I lost my job. Lost my job on Wednesday. Uh, went through a little bit of doubt, a little bit of that, but kicked it off. Got the first job that I went to interview for. A better job with benefits. I've had 10 or 11 job jobs that I could take. Um, just all by being obedient and coming here and and doing what I've been told to do by God. Uh, and just a lot of things, like he said, working with with finding out the root cause of a lot of these things. They're still not out, but all of them, but we're working, we're working on it. But uh, didn't go through the fear this time. Didn't go through the, what am I going to do? How am I going to make it? How am I going to pay bills? And then, like I said, the first interview, I had a gentleman that I had talked to that I'd set up an interview after this interview and told him I got the job. He texted me back, well, why was it, was my offer not good enough, was, and I'm like, this has never happened before. And um, I said, no, your offer was great, I appreciate it. He goes, well, honestly, tell me why. And I said, well, they offered me a lot of benefits. Well, if it doesn't work out, give me a call. This has happened with every single inquiry that people have made. That's never happened to me before. So, why is that happening? Hmm? Why is that happening? Because I'm being obedient and because I, I'm, um, I'm not listening to the crazy things in my head. I'm, I'm stepping out and I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. And I've turned from what I was doing. I don't want to have any part of it anymore. It, it doesn't even appeal to me. Has your wife seen any change in you? Um, yes. I think she has. Because she has reacted differently to me. We, we got into a couple of little arguments, but we both stopped. And before it got really heated, we stopped. We've never done that before. Um, and, and we've worked it out. And she said, I'm not going to let the devil tear us apart. She said that? Yes. Have you apologized to her? Yes. Yes, I did. And um, what did she say? She forgave me. She forgave me. And um, I mean, there's still the old man comes up every once in a while, but I'm fighting the old man. Yeah. And I'm not letting him win. Oh. Yeah. What a great test. And what's your name again? David. David. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Come on, can you come up here for a minute? <laughs> no.
Now listen, all that stuff's been happening to you because of love. And you're a very loved person. The Apostle Peter said that if a husband dishonors their wife, their prayers are hindered. And you apologized to her. Yes, I did. And you noticed an interesting change? Yes. And the old man still comes up once in a while. Yeah. What's he do? Uh, he thinks stupidly, I guess, is what the best thing is. Like what? Um, the ego and the vein comes up. Yeah. A little bit. What vein? Um, that I'm not good enough or I'm not, I'm not, you know, I don't measure up or whatever sometimes. And did you have that feeling when you was a kid? Yes. Did you get it from one of your parents? Yes. Who? My dad. Was he hard on you? Oh, yeah. Did he hit you? No. Or verbal? Verbal. What was your dad's name? Murray. Murray? Mm -hmm. Is he still alive? No. He died? Yeah. All right. It's okay if we pray for you? Can we pray for you? Yeah. All right. Close your eyes. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you know what I'm staring at right now? A miracle. A miracle of love. You just handed him everything, and that's only the beginning. Job, restored marriage, everything. Amazing. That can't be done by humans. That's, that's a miracle. I want you to forgive him for what he's done to his wife. He hurt her. She uh, was disgusted with him because of his behavior. She wanted to leave. She wanted a divorce. And the demons told him, why don't you just off yourself? The demons were talking like his dad running him down, criticizing him, saying negative things. I wish his dad was here today. I really do. I would love to pray for him. I know he was hurt as a child. I know he was a wounded man. I know all about it. But it's too late for his dad, but it's not too late for his son. And I'm asking you to help him open his heart today. And just receive the rest of your love you got waiting for him. All the good things you've already done for him. That's only the beginning. That just started. There's so much more. If he will come in and get it. If he'll come in and get it. I want you to go hunt his wife down today, Lord. Go get her. And just put your loving hand on her. Show her. Show her how much you love her. And I think he'll follow suit. Anything he said to her, anything he did to her, to hurt her, I'm asking you to forgive him. He had no business doing it. And if uh, he hadn't called the center, God only knows what would have happened. And I thank you for having him call. He wanted help. He didn't want help from me, he wanted it from you. Because I can't help him. So I'm asking you to give him the Holy Ghost and the rest of his blessings. I'm asking you for his wife. I'd love to ask you for his dad, but that's too late for me. Sorry about that. He scarred him bad in his childhood. I went over it today, Lord. Talking about them soul wounds from your parents. He hurt him. And... Uh, 
Today, his dad needs to go. He has a heavenly father now. He doesn't need a dad anymore. His heavenly father would never hurt him in a million years. It would never happen. Thank you. And we need to replace that. So, you're going to go ahead and release your dad now. And you're going to take a big breath. There you go. There you go. Come out. I let my dad's demons go right now. I let them out of me right this second. Come on now, go ahead. You're holding back now. Don't we are among friends here. You know, we're your friends here. You let your dad go right this second. <laughs> there he comes. Come on out. Come on out of there. Come out right now in Jesus' holy name. Yes, just like that. Just like that. Just like that. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, dear Lord. Come on out. Every spirit from his father. Yes. Come out. Come out in Jesus' name. There you go. Come out. Come out. There you go. Come out. There it goes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you to hold that. Hold that. Hold that. Come out right now. Come dad, out. come out. There it is. All the soul demons from your dad. dad. Come out now. Yeah, come soul wound. Suicide. Thank you, Jesus. Good. Good. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come out. Taking an offense. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come out. Come out. Hey, Steph. All soul wounds. All soul wounds. Steffi, yeah, yeah. are you going to repent of doing this? Come out now in Jesus' name. Yes, sir. Come out in the name of Jesus huh? Christ. We yes, sir. We strike you in the name of Jesus Christ. Negative <laughs> thoughts about anger, your daughter and your soul. family. Anger, Go ahead and repent. Anger and bitterness and rage. Come out repent. Yes. Come out of there, devil. <laughs> Forgive me, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Who else needs prayer? Come down, please. Come on down. Who needs it? What's going on, hon? Yeah. Yeah, he's not doing it. Who's doing it? You can forgive your husband because he's not doing it. Anger. 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 Come out now. What's his name again? Charles. Charles. Yeah, Charles. God, come out here. Come on. He has to come out. All false religious spirits, come out now. Charles. Leaving lies, leaving word curses, come out now. Then he's not all the way out. You gotta let him go. Spirit, come out now. Okay. Now the demons keep doing it because they're trying to stop your ministry. Isn't it obvious? Well, I'd do that if I was them too. I'd use him to get to you. It's a smart move, and you're letting it happen. You're disappointed in him. Bleeding word bleeding Aren't you? You're wounded. You're disappointed. There's no love there. Then that disappointed you. That disappointed you. Hey, come back here. Come right over here. He's dis. He's a major disappointment. That's got to come out, or you're going to be ruined. <laughs> <laughs> Can we let him go today? <laughs> Turn him over to the Lord. Can we do that? <laughs> What's he doing to you? So, he says the things that he knows would be the most. What do he say to you? So the, the major one before was that it would be my fault that my grandson was addicted to drugs. Even if I don't do it. And then this time it was that I was too fat to love. Yeah. That's a lie, isn't it? 
I don't know. And so then I think, am I in gluttony? Do I need to repent? And that's what I don't know. Is if I need to repent? Or if. Okay, you're taking spiritual advice from your husband? Really? Are you going are you going to repent of that? Well, you're disappointed in him, and you're but you're listening to his spiritual advice. Now that's not adding up to me. Does that add up to you? I don't think it does. You're an intelligent person. Now he needs to go. He now. All right, close your eyes there. Just take a big breath now. We got to get him out of there. All of his disappointments. All of them breathe. Come out. There he is right there. Yes, right there. Come out there. Come on out. Come out of there. Come out of there right now. I let my husband go. I let him go. I let him go. Thank you, Jesus. You need something? I do. What is it? I need prayer. Well, over. Um, I, I don't know. I've been dealing with it for... Dealing with what? Um, just demons, uh, incubus. Probably you get attacked at night? At night, during the day, constantly. Yeah. Everything Did you get about. raped when you were younger? Not that I'm aware. Not that I remember. Were you promiscuous when you were younger? Did you get day raped? And were you, have you been oh. married? Yeah. I was married, yes. And was he abusive? Uh, yeah, probably verbally, like narcissist. Did he cheat on you? Yes. You still married to him? No. Did he go to? He's still like he's still close to me. Did he go to prostitutes? Huh? Did he ever go to a prostitute? I have no idea. Did you know anybody he cheated on? With? Did you know him? Uh, no. No. Okay, and then. You've been divorced how long? Uh, probably seven, eight years. And then the incubus started when? The incubus started almost four, well, three, three and a half years ago. And after a big trauma, lost a bunch of money, was in a business with my sister's husband and another business partner, lost probably quarter million dollars somewhere in there. Um, and I don't know. I feel like there was a witch that one of the guys introduced me to and he that's what what I felt like and just kind of seeing images of him and I was doing Bible study listening to the Holy Spirit and so it started imitating and then after I got so long into believing it then all of a sudden it was like it revealed itself when I was praying about you know God is everything to me and it was like no no, it's not. I just kind of started from there. I've just been. What's your husband's name? No. What? No. 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 Okay. It's okay if I pray for you? Yeah. But I was already divorced for that. What? Okay. You already what? I was already divorced from him from that, but yeah. Yeah, that was seven years ago you divorced. Right. Yeah, so he's been gone a while. Right. And did you have a boyfriend after your husband? Yes. Okay. How many? Probably four or five. Okay, were any of them spiritual people? No. Yeah, any I was thinking them? about like almost everybody I've dated or been with are non-Christian, non-believers. Okay, were they ever involved in a masonry or new age or anything like that? Not that I know. Was just, they were just regular guys? Yeah. Do you know if any of them had ever been to a prostitute? I could guess it, that one of them did. I would guess. And then, I don't know for sure. How long have you been a Christian? Uh, I accepted Jesus when I was probably 8, 10 years old, but really started, you know, chasing after it. I don't know because I was praying during all of that time and kind of reaching out. So, like, 10, 15 years, like, I was a believer. Okay. My you speak in tongues? No. Uh, my mom's here. Or my she is. Step is that her? My stepdad's a pastor of church. What church? Uh, it's, uh, oh my gosh. It's in Idaho. 
What kind of church was it? Non-denominational. And then my brother is also a pastor. Oh. He was in, he's in Texas, real life Arizona. He went to Scottsdale Bible here. Um, but it, ever, ever since I was young, like every time like I went to do like a, a one-on-one training for Christianity, and enemies just come after me my whole entire life since I was little. So I've always kind of pulled back. I wasn't ready to fight it. Wasn't ready to fight it. And now I have 99 problems. Okay. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> what a story. Right. All right. Ready? Okay. Father God, you see this beautiful woman standing here? She's been a believer for years, but she's been a serial adulterer. A Christian serial adulterer. And she didn't know that when she slept with a man, transfer spirits got into her body. Spirits of perverts, succubus monsters transferred in and she knew better than to do that and she did it anyway so her sin was worse than if a sinner sinned. She's worse than a sinner and today she wants to apologize and she wants all these men including her husband Noel he had demons all these men must come out today all the men of adultery including her husband she committed adultery with him too before they got married there they are right there come on up right now you stinking pervert you come out of that body right now you suck you this spirit you oral sex demon come out of her mouth right now come out of there right now come out of her tummy come on out come up out of her throat take a breath and blow come out of there come out come out come on out come out of there quickly quickly come out no come out of her right now no come out Christian perversion Christian adultery come out of that body right now hurry up come out right now hurry there he is there he is keep coughing keep, keep coughing Thank you. hold that hold that come out right now go go come out come out no come out of that body right now Come out. Uh, a bunch of bad men she slept with after she was a Christian. Come out of there right now. Come out right now. Demon of lust. Go. How'd that go? How'd that go? It went bad here. Okay, you, keep, you keep moving forward. Okay? You're on, you're on your way. Coming out right now. I already sent it right now. There it is. Yes, there it is. Fear, come out. Come out. Fear, come out. Fear, you come out of my body right now. Come out. Worrying about my my wife, what she thinks. Worry and fear. Come out. Come out in Jesus' name. Go. Go. And go. Hi, sweetheart. How are you? Um, so I've been coming here for a while. Um, I my ex boyfriend started coming here, but he, I think he's. I've been getting some fear. I think he's been kind of stalking me. Um, I I had blocked him he, on my phone. He wants you back. Yeah, and he is he safe? I thought he was. And he's come here for some counseling sessions, like with Rick. Um, he was here last night and he was here the night before but he was trying to talk he showed up at my house Wednesday he's trying to talk to me even though he's blocked on my phone and so what's his name Vince Ben okay. Vince Vince yeah oh, okay 
Now, uh, how long do you date him? Four years. Four years? Okay. Can I pray for you? All right. Did you sleep with Vince? When's the last time? Over a year. A year ago? And is that how long you've been broke up? A year? No. Um, so when I got saved, I, I stopped sleeping with him. I moved out, but we didn't break up. We stayed We stayed in a relationship. When was that? When? Yeah, when did you get saved? Um, About a year and a half ago. Oh, okay. Yeah, and I've been coming here for about 10 months. All right, great. Yeah. So you're ready to turn your life around. Yeah. You've already done it. Yeah, yeah I, wasn't, I wasn't able to block him before or leave him yeah. without deliverance, but now um, I was feeling better, but then he showed up at my house and is yeah. trying to get, I feel like the counter attacks from him right. showing up. And it, last night when I came here, he was waiting for me out in front and was trying to talk to me, and I felt yeah. afraid like that he's going to Yeah. And I don't know if any of his deliverance is real. I don't think he's really, I think he's not really repenting, and I think his, his eyes were like black, like scary looking. Who did he see when he came here for counseling? Um, he saw Rick like a, a, a couple times but I think he told him kind of like a fabricated version of what's really what is going on. He's just playing along. Yeah. 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 And you're you're he's gotta get, get back rid of it. Yeah he's tr he's playing along to get back. Right yeah here. and it started to trick me for a little bit and I, I kept him around in my life but it was then I once I cut it off and I said this is absolutely done and I blocked him now he's trying to talking. Yeah. Yeah. Now those are his spirits doing that they're yeah. trying they, they they see you going getting away from them so they're using him to drag you back yeah yeah so that's a good sign okay because okay. you're changing in here yeah thank you jesus close your eyes father god you see this beautiful woman standing here just relax huh there you go she's got a good heart and she loves you. And I know you've got a husband all picked out for her. There it is. And Vince needs to come out of there right now. Come out right now in the name of Jesus. Come out right now. Father has a husband picked out for her. It, you are not it. You come out in Jesus' name. Spirit of adultery and control and narcissism. Come out of her. There it is. Come out of her throat. Come out of that throat. There it is. Keep coughing. Come out of there right now. Come out. Come out there right now. Hold that. Hold that. Come out. Come out right now. Come out of that body. Hurry up. Come on out. Come out of there. Come out of that body right now. Come out of there. Come out of there. What happened? What happened after the other night? Okay, Dad's back on medication, and he went out and did crystal, and he came back, and I went to Church of Nations to the fellowship. I got deliverance, but Dad's spirits are raping me in the spirit. No, no. He's a bisexual, homosexual. Yeah. I'm going. I'm What's his name again? His name is Rick Raymond Rick, Gonzalez. Rick Raymond. 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 Yeah. Okay. He, now listen. He didn't want to come today. He's playing music. No. And I was totally. I can feel the rape in the spirit by my father. Yeah. No. no that's not the problem. Now. Well, I've been going. You've got. I've been bringing. I've been telling people about this place. A lot of people no. know. And yeah. a lot of the Church of the Nations love you. Yeah. <laughs> now listen. Uh, Raymond has to come out of here. Yeah. <laughs> He's in me. Because all you do is think about Raymond. Yeah, because I'm with my dad and I yeah, and every time he gets sick, I come. He raped me as a child. I know. I lost me and they transferred in. Yeah, I got a transfer. When you were talking to him, I said, Oh, no wonder why I'm supposed to be here. Yeah. I got my Raymond dad's. has to come out. Yeah, dad's gotta come out of that. Raymond. Yeah. Yeah. He's in me. Yes. Yeah. And he drained me really bad this morning. Now listen, all you do is talk about Raymond. Okay, so what do I talk you about? You notice me? that? 
Dorothy, yeah. You know what that? She was laying right next to us on the chair, and I was so in much pain. I'm staying with him. We got an apartment. I know. Now. I got to get out of there. Everything you said the other day when I first met you was about, I need to get away from the family. Yeah, you know? and on top of that, Raymond is about Dorothy. living in your apartment. Yeah, he and is. he's also living in here. Yeah. He has to come out of here first I before he goes today. out. But it's yeah. his apartment. We just got it together. He has to come out of here first. Yeah, I need him out of here. Before the I apartment. Okay. God does things one step at a time. Okay. First this. Yeah. Then that. Yeah. Okay, I need him to come out of me. Yeah. I told him today. Not that. You got to come out of me, Dad. You're all over me. Not that. Yeah. This. This, my temple. Yeah, I want him out. Yeah. That has to come first. Yeah. First things first. Okay. That's how the Lord does it. He does yeah. first things first. I love you, Mike. I tell everyone, you, I believe that God is using you in these last days. I want to learn how to be like you and be a help in the kingdom. Okay, now that's something down the road. Right, right. now, he right has now to come I, out. He does. I want him out of me. That's why I came. You're, you're becoming obsessed with him. Yeah. Yes, because he's in me. I gotta get him out. You're losing your mind. Yes, I am. That's why okay. I don't want to lose it. Okay, you gotta repent. Okay, repent. Okay. Ob obsessing over Raymond. Obsessing having over bad feelings Raymond. about him. Having bad feelings. Being about afraid him. of him. Being afraid of him. I repent from all Go ahead. anger, anger, Go ahead. fear, sadness. I repent against Raymond Gonzalez. Raymond, Rico, Dad, I'm angry. I'm mad as a child, as a baby. He molested me as a child, got me raped by the boys. It doesn't matter. Oh, hey. Oh, hey. Oh, hey. Hey. I had you in me all my life, and I want to be the demons that are yours. Out of me. I'm not dealing with a uh, man, I'm dealing with spirits and demons, generational stuff. I want it all out. The possession, the belly, the weight, the sodomites, the beaters, the poison. You can't get me out. All right, there they come. Come on out. Come out of there right now. Hurry up. Hold that. Hold that. Come out, Satan. Come out, Satan. Come out, Satan. Come out of there, you rapist. Come out. Come out. Come out of there, you rapist. Come out, you rapist. Come out right now. Keep coughing. Keep coughing. Keep coughing. Come out. Come out of there. Hatred for Raymond, fear of Raymond, <laughs> criticizing Raymond. Come out right now. <laughs> Come out of there, hurry up. Hurry up. Come out. Come out of there. Come out right now. I'm trying to get her dad out of her. Her dad's, her dad's name is Raymond. Raymond, come out. Every demon from, come out right now. Come out. Come out. How'd that go? Did, did you get rid of him? I've been trying for a long time. It's a lot of layers. Is he gone? I hope so. Huh? How do I make sure that he's like, like, you know her? Yeah, but she's like my best friend. Oh. Yeah. Do you have any negative emotions left about, what's his name, Steve? Vince? Do you have any negative emotions about Vince? Not right now. Nothing? Okay. So if you have a negative emotion that's telling you there's something still in there. Yeah. Okay. 
the, the emotion I had was just last night when I showed up here and it was fear, like when he was waiting outside for me and not leaving me alone, not taking no for an answer. It was right. Like, it was, I was feeling good for a while when I blocked him and we weren't talking and I felt fine. But then it was just now, like he, the last few days, he's been trying, like he showed up at my house and I felt. He's irritated. turning up the pressure. I felt irritation. I felt. Yeah, like, that's in here. Yeah. Okay, that all has to come out. That, see? That, come on out. See? Come out of there, Vince. Come on. It's not all out. Come out of there right now. Make her make her get all of them out. Yeah. Vince, you come out in Jesus' name. Vince, get out of the girl. Vince, get out right now.